Hello, lizards. Today, we're going to step into the magical uh, programming and learn about the special language called oh, C. It's like learning a secret code that can make computers do amazing things. things. But first, let's dive into a syllabus and explore what is ahead of us. Lesson zero, we're the adventure. But we're, C, uh, we're starting a fantastic adventure in the world of coding with C. We worry why C is so cool and why it's like having a magic wand for computers now. Lesson one. Drawing with C O. Uh, shapes and colors of the artist used in C. Uh, you see to draw pictures with colorful shapes, just like drawing with crayons. Lesson two. Our first code, hello world. Uh, let's create our very first code using C I. We go. Oh, you see to make a special greeting card to say hello to everyone. Lesson three. Time. Counting with uh, C, we'll be, we're diving into the world of number, number C. In this lesson, we'll discover how C helps us count and do math. Now it's like having a magical counting tool in the computer. Get ready for exciting counting games with DC, where we'll learn to use numbers and solve fun challenges together. Lesson four. Magic word, rastering to it today, but we'll work our magic with C and create something truly enchanting words. In this lesson, we'll write C programs that make magic words appear on the computer screen. They're like creating spells with code. But the real magic happens when we invent our secret language using CL. And I created our own secret code that only we can understand. But lesson five, puzzles in CD. Are you ready for some brain teasing challenges with C? In this lesson, we become puzzle solving experts using C code. It's like being detective solving mysteries with code. Uh, we'll explore logical thinking and use our, our new found C skills to, to tackle exciting puzzles. And guess what? We'll start counting from zero, not one, in our code puzzles. Lesson six, journey to C's memory palace. Pack your bags because we're going on an incredible journey to C's memory palace. In this lesson, we'll discover the secrets of memory and storage and see odds and C's. Imagine C's memory as a treasure chest filled with amazing things waiting to be explored. Lesson seven. The amazing world of pointers to get ready to meet a special character, C, a Mr. Pointer. He's like our magical guide who show us how to point to things with C. It's like using a magic wand to say, look over there. But well, we'll unlock the amazing world of pointers together. Coming to parts. Case. Think of it like the outer shell of robot. It holds all the important robot parts. Power supply. This is like the robot's battery. It gives energy to the robot so it can move and do things. Um, motherboard, imagine this as the robot's brains where all the thinking happens. It has memory like a robot's memory too. But see, name two, uh, the central processing unit, this is the robot's super smart brain part. It thinks really fast and follows your instructions. Memory, memory is like the robot's notepad. It remembers things for a little while. Storage. Storage is where a robot keeps all its toys and tools when it's not using input devices. I, these are like the robot's ears, eyes, and hands. They help the robot hear, see, and touch things. Output devices. These are like the these are like the robot's voice and screen. They help the robot talk and show you things. Operating system. So think of the uh, as the robot butt's boss. Like it tells the robot what to do and how to do it. The boss lives inside a special box, how they work together. When you press the robot's on button, the battery wakes up the brain on the motherboard. The brain wakes up the boss from the special box. The boss then tells the robot what games to play or what work to do. The boss also makes sure the robot shares toys nicely, like sharing in the screen and printer with you. In conclusion, all these parts like the brain boss and tools work together to make the robot super smart and helpful. They can play games, do homework, and more. By knowing how they team up, you can see how amazing your computer robot really is. All right, before we dive into why it's so good, now let me tell you about how it all started. Once upon a time in a faraway place called Finland, there lived a young boy named Linus. Linus had a special interest in something called computers. Imagine computers like super smart friends that can do lots of things if you tell them what to do. But to talk to computers, you need a secret language called programming. Linus really liked this secret language, and he wanted to make something super cool with it. So he started learning a special part of the secret language called C. 
things, see like magic words that make computers do amazing tricks. It's like saying abracadabra uh, to make things happen. With his magic C words, Linus decided to create his very own computer thing. He called it Linux, which is like the brain of a computer. Just like you have a brain of a kink and do stuff, computers need brains too. Now, Linus didn't keep his cool creation all to himself. Nope. He wanted everyone to play with you, just like you share your favorite toys with your friends. So he shared Linux with the whole world for free. It was like giving out tasty cookies to all his friends. People from all around the world started using Linux to do awesome things with their computers. Some used it for schoolwork, some for fun games, and some for important stuff like sending rockets into space. Now, when you think about Linus, you can think of him as a friendly wizard who used his magic C words to create Linux and share it with the whole world. And that's the magical story of how a young boy named Linus used his computer skills to make something amazing for everyone to enjoy. Just like you sharing your toys with your friends. It's a great question, Andy, yeah, why? Why Link shows um, penguin as a signature? Like Linux uses a penguin as a symbol because penguins are cute and friendly, just like the people who work on Linux. Imagine Linux as a big team of computer wizards from all over the world. They work together to make Linux better and share it with everyone for free. Now, these smart computer folks needed a fun and friendly mascot. Something that make them smile while they worked hard. So they picked a penguin they chose the name Tux. Tux is like Linux's best friend. He's a happy, chubby penguin who's always ready to help. The penguin symbolizes that Linux's event is for everyone. Just like a penguin is friendly to everyone it meets. It also reminds people that using Linux is fun just like hanging out with a cute penguin would be. I'm not, so, whenever you see Tux the penguin, you'll know all right, it's all about people working together to make computer stuff that's friendly and fun for everyone. Any other questions? All right, let's take a quick journey through the history of our C. A long time ago, 1960s, imagine a bunch of super smart people in lab coats. They needed a way to talk to computers, but each computer spoke a different language. So they created C. It was like a universal translator for computers. C gets even better in attendees. Started to grow and improve. More people used it because it was so friendly to computers. It was like a superhero that could work on lots of different computer types. Enter KRC 1970s. Two smart folks named Kernahan and Richie wrote a special book about C. People started calling it KRC. Uh, this, this book became the C Superhero Manual teaching everyone how to use it. In the computer world in the 1980s, C became super popular in the computer world. People used it to build computer games, make operating systems, and create cool software. It was like the magic wand on to programming languages. C's legacy, even in today, C is still a superhero in the, in the programming world. It's the foundation for many other languages like Python and CE. Many computer wizards still use C to make amazing things happen in the digital world. So C started in the 1960s, became super popular in the 1980s, and it's still a big deal today. Talk about the superpowers you'll gain by learning C, like having a super fast computer brain, a memory like a wizard. The benefits of learning C. Your superpowers, one, Super speed brain. Learning C gives you the power to make your computer work really, really fast. Imagine telling your computer to do something and it happens in the blink of an eye. That sees super speed magic. Two, memory wizardry. With C, you become a memory wizard. You can make your computer remember things perfectly and use its memory like a superhero's notebook. This helps your computer do many tasks at once without getting confused. Three, Computer compatibility. C is like, like a, a secret code works on almost any computer. So if you learn C, you can be a tech superhero who can talk to all kinds of computers from big ones to tiny ones like your Raspberry Pi. Four, build in anything. When you're a C, you have the power to create almost anything on your computer. You make game apps uh, and even your own computer programs. Like It's like having a magical toolkit. Five, super learning. It's like a secret language that teaches you how computers think. Once you know C, learning, learning other computer languages becomes super easy. It's like unlocking the doors to many other ventures in coding.
So learning C is like gaining superpowers for your computer adventures. You can make your computer lightning fast. Remember everything and create amazing things. It's like becoming a coding superhero, all right? And you might have heard, with great power comes great responsibility, therefore we need to, to address limitations of, of programming in of C. Programming in C, memory juggling. Sometimes forgets to clean up its toys and memory leaks or mixes them up by mistake. Pointer pointers is like using magic arrows that can make things disappear or go all mixed up. Your type trouble. Sometimes doesn't know what kind of superhero is working with, which can lead to confusion. Super coders duty. C makes you the boss that makes sure everything works perfectly, like stopping villains from causing trouble. Double data. C can have two heroes trying to use the same secret map, and it can get tricky to predict. Overflow problems. Sometimes C's special gadgets can scale too many secrets and make a mess. Uh, rule confusion. Different versions of C might have different rules, like talking in different superhero languages. Text adventure. Working with words and NCs can be like solving a puzzle in a book. You need to be careful not to tear any pages. No superpowers. Doesn't have some of the uh, cool powers like other languages. So it's a bit like an ordinary hero. Tricky codes. TC's flexibility lets you create secret codes, but they can be hard to understand even for grown up heroes. No safety net. C doesn't have safety nets. So you need to be careful not to step on banana peels or fall into traps. Even though C has these challenges, there are tools to help you be a super uh, catch problems before they cause trouble. All right. Any uh, questions? Yes, Barbie. Absolutely. Uh, like I previously mentioned, we will dive into the topic of memory and pointers later on. For now, keep in mind, these things can cause a bit of a mess, and we have to be aware of that. Okay, okay my, my young magicians, that's all for today. Next time, we'll create some magical shapes. Have a great day.